our ne next presentation is uh, entitled The Electronic and Geometric Effects of Alkali Promoters in Carbon Monoxide Hydrogenation over Potassium uh, Molybdenum Carbon Catalysts. And it's presented by Jae Sung Lee. Uh, and his co authors are Sun Ho Kim and Young Ko Kim of the Research Center for Catalytic Technology. I think all the rest of it's on the uh, screen, so I won't read the remainder. Okay, you did homework for that. <laughs> Uh, the the uh, Sono King was my former college student and younger kids, my, my, my co colleague in, in Costec, Liam. And I also did uh, know that I, I'm now visiting the, the laboratory of Gary Heller of Yale University, and uh, I appreciate his ability. The alkali promoters has been widely used. In, in hydrogen catalysis in general and in CO hydrogenation in particular in order to improve activity, selectivity, and stability. And today we heard already a lot of them. And the, uh, I, I listed the, uh, some of the most commonly ob observed effects. They usually increase the uh, chain length of the product when they produce the higher molecular weight product, or they promote the uh, alcohol or olefin formation, or they uh, reported to, to reduce carbon deposition, and sometimes increase or, or decrease reaction rate. Uh, the, the, the origin of this the, uh, the reported effect is, is, is far from being established, sometimes the, uh, inconsistent. And I think the most popular explanation is so-called the electron effect, namely the uh, alkali promoters provide electron to the metal, and electron-rich metal accelerate CO dissociation or inhibit hydrogen dissociation. And also, the, uh, they the are known to provide site, special site for molecular activation of CO, so the, with the uh, hydrogenation function of metal, form a kind of a bifunctional site. And uh, this explanation is supposed to explain the formation of alcohol. And they also the, uh, uh, start to be stabilized the, uh, the metal, the positive metal site to change the chemistry. And sometimes they, they don't promote gasification of the liquid water that reduce the uh, carbon deposition. Uh, usually, these effects are not take place simultaneously, and the, uh, we have been particularly interested in this area by the fact that uh, in some cases, one particular promote, promoter uh, exerts one effect, and the same alkali element, the element they, uh, promote the other effect in, in other cases. And good example is the potassium promoted the uh, molybdenum disulfide, which is the, uh, the well known catalyst for mixed alkosynthesis of UCC and, and, and DAO. And the, uh, because the, uh, most of you would not follow the, uh, the work done in the remote area like Korea, I uh, summarize what we have done for the last couple of years. Uh, molybdenum sulfide itself, this is unsupported molybdenum, produced the most the hydrocarbons. And that the major product of hydrocarbon is methane. And the hydrocarbons heavier than ethane versus the, uh, the methane is 0.7, and very little alcohol formation. Now, we introduced the potassium in, in various uh, uh, Forms. And we observed the, uh, the, the effect and found that the, the, uh, those potassium promotes do one of, one of two things. Potassium carbonate, hydroxide, acetate, sulfide, and, and nitrate uh, do the, uh, the promote alcohol formation, starting from the 30 to 60%. And the, uh, th th this uh, group uh, 
uh, will be called the, uh, the carbonate group for convenience. And potassium sulfate, chloride, and bromide, iodide, doesn't, uh, don't do much about the, uh, the alcohol formation, but they consistently increase the formation of the higher product so that this index increased uh, from 0.7 to the up to 0.5. So just looking at the phenomena, we can call uh, this type of, of the promote as the alcohol promoters and this group promoters, chain growth promoters. And of course, the, uh, you want to understand the uh, what what the uh, factors of the promoters contribute alcohol formation in one case and the hydrocarbon formation in other case. And we did some uh, physical characterization, including uh, scanning OD microprobe and, and electron uh, probe microanalysis. And the, there are two the fundamental differences in the behavior of these promoters. The carbonate promoters were shown to spread themselves uniformly on the molybdenum sulfide phase. On the other hand, these sulfate promoters show very highly uh, non-uniform distribution, forming sometimes big promoter particles. Secondly, by infrared, we were able to show that uh, these carbonate group promoters readily remove their counter anion and form some common intermediate. Whatever the starting material is, you form the, the common potassium complex which could be seen by infrared. On the other hand, these sulfate group promoters uh, maintain their initial the chemical state even after the reaction. So this observation was the explained by this highly simplified uh, the with the path by first the, uh, spreading themselves uniformly over the surface. The pro what promoter does is the, uh, the blocking, suppressing the hydrogenation activity of this, this the intermediate. Furthermore, the, uh, they also form some kind of the active site, which would activate carbon monoxide and, and, and may promote the, uh, its, its insertion into the growing chain, which eventually lead to, to alcohols. On the other hand, the sulfate promoters, they, they form the uh, big particle, and many the active sulfide the surfaces exposed, so you form the, this, the uh, alkanes. What it does is the, uh, modify probably the electronic state of sulfide which would increase the dissociation of the CO and the increase the population of this intermediate and increase the, uh, the chain length. So this time of the, uh, the effect of the, uh, the chain growth promoter has been called the, uh, the electronic effect. In the former effect, namely the alcohol promoters involve the uh, site blocking you know, or some special site which is directly indirect with CO could be called the uh, uh, geometric effect. Today is the uh, extension of the, the, the work on molybdenum sulfide. We chose to study molybdenum carbide because of the, our previous the experience. The, First, we want to know that if the, uh, this behavior of promoters is also take place on, on, on carbide as in sulfide. But secondly, we know that uh, if you promote molybdenum carbide, it forms the uh, light olefins with high selectivity. I looked at the, uh, the Exxon's data, but, but it's not as good as the Exxon's one, but it forms the uh, selectively C2 to C, C5 fraction of the olefins. And also, if it increases the, the pressure above the uh, uh, 30 atmosphere, it forms a high alcohols with, with the uh, uh, excellent fraction of the, uh, the C plus uh, alcohol portion. So this is 
we have a catalyst which shows both the, uh, the olefin selectivity and alcohol selectivity, and we want to find out what factor of the, uh, the promoters will cause the, the olefin selectivity. So we prepared an unsupported molybdenum carbide according to the well-known method developed at, at Stanford, and we put the, the various forms of the casting promoters by intervention. And the reaction was studied, the typical the flow system at the, this pressure. And what we saw was the, the paraffin, olefin, and alcohols, and, and other the oxygenate. And this is the, the business slide I have. And the, this is the... Uh, activity and, and selectivity uh, of the various potassium promoted molybdenum carbide. The molybdenum carbide itself produced the mostly the normal paraffins and, and very small amount of the uh, olefin and, and alcohols. And you see the, uh, the they produce very high pressure of the low molecular weight, medium molecular weight product in the LPG region, which is the well-known property of the molybdenum type catalyst. If you put promoters on, on this molybdenum carbide, again, two effects take place. Uh, potassium carbonate, hydroxide, and acetate, they all bring the selectivity to olefins and alcohols about equal, equal proportion. On the other hand, the chloride and sulfate <coughs> doesn't do much for the alcohol formation bring about a very marginal amount of the olefin synthesis and almost doesn't do anything in, in hydrocarbon synthesis. And the, if you the, uh, deduce the, uh, the effect of the combustion, maybe the effect is less than 5%, so it's just very little. Uh, the, if you look at the product distribution in more detail, you can see that there's a little decrease in, in, in methane, but the most important change in, in this, the, uh, this the, uh, the drastic decrease in C2 and C5 uh, as the olefin and alcohol is formed. So if you add all this product, the, uh, the, the distribution of product is, is almost equal, which is also the, uh, the support that the mechanism of the product formation. So what we can see is that the same group of promoters, the, uh, which promoted alcohol formation in molybdenum sulfide, promote both alcohol formation and olefin formation on molybdenum carbide. Now, as we did for the, uh, the molybdenum sulfide research, we also uh, examined the distribution of these promoters on the surface of molybdenum sulfide. The first is the uh, scanning the uh, OJ uh, microscope. What it does is that this is the scanning electron microscope picture of the catalyst. Now you, you scan the uh, small regions of the, of the catalyst by OJ spectroscopy and, and quantifies it and draw a map for the element by element. So the, in this case, the what didn't so the, the white spot means the uh, high concentration. It did not show much the, the molybdenum signal that, that the surface is not, that, that the exposure of molybdenum is very small. And this is the, uh, the potassium. You can see the big potassium particles, highly the uh, non-uniform distribution is about 10 micrometer. And on the other hand, you can see the carbon. This is the carbon. And you can see the uh, correspondence between potassium and carbon. Here, this is the potassium, you see the, the correspondence. So on the, for the, uh, the sulfate, the distribution is highly non-uniform. And this contrast to the, the molybdenum carbonate, which shows the, the much better the distribution. But this distribution could be seen better in, in this the x-ray map. So 
Now the OJ probe just did few surface layers, but, but this X-ray probe about one micrometer of the depth. So you can, now you can see the morphology of this particle by, by molecular map. And here, here is the, uh, the K map. So again, you can see the big potassium particles. You can even identify that the, the, this, is the, this, this, this particle is potassium. On the other hand, the carbonate, you can see that the, the distribution of this element, molybdenum and, and potassium, is, is, is similar. And if you, if you neglect this white spot, which is probably excess the potassium, you can see that most of the potassium cover the molybdenum carbide. And so this, this distribution is reflected in, in this analysis. That if you analyze by chemical analysis, you have the same concentration of potassium in the bulk, but, but OJ shows that the surface enrichment for potassium carbonate and depletion in, in the potassium sulfate. So like on the molybdenum, sulf the, the molybdenum sulfide, those promoters, the same group of promoters, behave differently on, on the molybdenum carbide surface. Now, in order to look at the chemical state of these promoters, we measure the infrared spectra before the reaction and after the reaction. And this is the uh, acetate. So before the reaction, you see the uh, acetate peak. After the reaction, this acetate peak remains almost no change. But uh, for the uh, K2F, uh, there's no, not much structure. This is just, just the, uh, the blow up of the baseline. And after the reaction, you see the uh, new peak are formed. If, if you compare that, you can assign the, these two peaks to kind of the, uh, the acetate. And this, this is the, uh, the hydroxyl bending uh, structure. And also, if you start from the potassium carbonate, you have the, uh, the carbonate peak, but after the reaction, instead of this carbonate, you see new peaks, which also could be assigned to acetate. Again, the hydroxide, you see the, the, the similar peak are formed. So all those promoters converge to the similar structure during the reaction, which seems to be related to the active side of the alcohol formation. On the other hand, uh, for sulfate, before the reaction, after the reaction, there's no change. Yeah, the same goes to the uh, KCL. So the, we observed that uh, the, uh, like uh, uh, on molybdenum sulfide, the same thing happened on, on molybdenum carbide. They behave differently physically and, and chemically. So the, then the next question is, is the, uh, that then how the, the olefin selectivity is controlled. It is, seems to go hand in hand with the alcohol selectivity. So we look at the reaction data in more detail. Uh, this is the, uh, the time curve for the, for the CO conversion. And I'd like to remind you the, uh, the, the pre-treatment condition before the reaction, the catalyst after, after intermination and drying was reducing hydrogen at this temperature for two hours, and then synthesis was fed at a little bit lower temperature. And you see the typical the drop in CO conversion, and, and it was stabilized after about 10 hours. Now, if you look at the change in alcohol selectivity, you see that uh, there's no very little alcohol formation in the beginning, and it, it, it reaches um, the uh, steady state value after about 10 hours. And then, if you look at the olefin selectivity, in contrast, you, you see the uh, you see immediately after the starting the reaction, you see the olefin formation. So, whatever the state of this at the beginning of the reaction, this is state which promote olefin formation, but not alcohol formation. So it seems the, uh, 
you know, if we look at the, uh, uh, this uh, reaction test again, uh, it seems the, uh, the state of the, the, the promoter before the reaction is just spreading out of, of the promoters without decomposition. And that spreading happened before the uh, pretreatment conditions. And the, uh, in order to, to obtain high selectivity for olefin, most obvious way is to suppress the, uh, the hydrogenation. This can be done in theory two ways. One is the electronically controlled hydrogenation, but we know this doesn't work because those electric uh, promoters produce very little olefins. And more efficient way is to the physical blocking of those sites. On the other hand, alcohol formation required additional condition, namely formation of that uh, the, uh, the special site which could activate the CO molecular. And there is the, uh, another difference between the olefin selectivity and the alcohol selectivity. This is the effect of selectivity against the, the potassium with the mole ratio. And optimum potassium loading take place for the olefin synthesis about 0.1. And on the other hand, optimum for the alcohol synthesis is about the, uh, the 0.2. So it, it, this could be uh, the, the maybe reflect the electronic component of the, uh, the, the olefin formation. So the, this work uh, shows that the, the differentiate the, the what condition we need for alcohol formation and what condition we need for the olefin formation. And one, one thing we realize is that there's very little effect of that uh, electronic promoters. Uh, but uh, it seems that uh, the, the, they just stay there the, as a big particle. But if you look at the uh, activation energy, uh, you, you'll find that this is not the case. The bare molybdenum carbide has the activation energy of 92 kilojoules. On the other hand, all the promoted uh, the carrot shows the reduced activation energy. So the effect is there, but it's not reflected in the, the selectivity. To conclude, alcohol promoter in potassium molybdenum sulfate promote both alcohol and olefin formation in the carbide system. The physical and chemical behaviors of promoters are similar on both the uh, molybdenum sulfide and molybdenum carbide. And olefin formation requires uniform spreading of the promoter over molybdenum carbide surface to block this hydrogenation site. On the other hand, alcohol formation requires, in addition to the hydrogenation site blocking, the formation of a new active site which could uh, directly activate the CO and possibly uh, facilitate its insertion step. And Unlike the, uh, the sulfide uh, case, electron effect of promoter for the molybdenum carbide was not evident on the, the selective effect. Thank you for your attention. Uh, do you have any theory on why some potassium salts distribute very evenly and some conglomerate? Stay in particular. We are looking for the theory. It must be related to some surface energy. It's those promoters known to spread, but, but the degree, the, the ease of the spread depends on many factors. The melting point is one, one parameter, but, but it's not, not always true. There, there is, there is the, uh, the, the study to specifically to those spreading behavior of this material on, on high surface area material. Does it relate to basicity at all? Because you seem to have a lot of uh, conjugate salts and strong acids, and one yeah, group yeah, and yeah, the other yeah. one seems to be weaker acids. Yeah, but we are not, not, not know exactly. Is it possible that some of the sites that you're attempting to poison are um, remaining or residual oxygen on the surface of carbide, uh, of the uh, carbide material? 
yes, that, that's possible. There, 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 there is it's a lot of the, uh, the, the oxygen on the surface. Right. Yeah. Uh, their effect, I don't know. We, we okay, by all the scanning, we can the, uh, quantify the amount of oxygen, but it, it does not, did not correlate well with the energy, the, the reactivity. But the, there are ways to try to get rid of that oxygen and then come back and recarburize, which would eliminate then, according to your theory, that at least one of the requirements for that alkali. Did you try doing that? Uh, we didn't do that. Uh, but the oxygen in molybdenum carbides, you probably know, is very complex. And it's very difficult to obtain the reproducible surface once it is exposed to the air. So you did it at Stanford, so you can do it again. You you took the the potassium and the accessible uh, rather uh, than molybdenum carbide rather than the molybdenum oxide. Yeah. Uh, what kind of the direct interactions uh, do you expect for between the molybdenum carbide and the potassium? I think it's you you use or the, the chemical, the physical interaction for the, uh, the, the sulfate group. And I think the, uh, those, the carbonate group first decompose and get rid of the, those anions and then turn itself to the, uh, the some stable intermediate with the, uh, with the reaction with the, uh, the reactive gas. I'm having a very hard time reconciling the electronic effect associated with an um, alkali promoter in the form of bromide iodide chloride or any form of a salt. Uh, wouldn't you think that alkali promoter donates electron or withdraws electron from bromide chloride or sulfide instead of doing that type of interaction with your actual cannons and metal surface? That, that. That gave me a headache. Yeah. Because, because it, it, it seems the, uh, the, 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 alcohol, the, the halide is very stable. Still, it give, gives an effect, and, and yeah, just looking at the effect, it fits very well the electronic the, the, the form of the model. That, that's all I want to say. Why? why is that, uh, I, I cannot answer. Well, I think we'd better bring the discussion to a close at that point. Thank you very much. Thank you.